Hey guys, how's it going? Um, I wanted to do something a little bit different today. I'm going to do a pretty informal video here. And um, I had a guy named uh, K. Mars. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Um, he emailed in and he asked some really fantastic questions. Um, pretty similar questions to what a lot of people ask. And so I thought I'd just take a few minutes here. I've got them printed out. Um, take a few minutes and just answer those questions for him specifically. And then uh, hopefully all of you guys can benefit a bit uh, as well from it. So. Um, so forgive me, I'm just going to read off the questions and then um, that way you guys have an idea of what he's asking. And uh, for you, KMRs, uh, I hope that I'm able to answer the questions the way that you're asking them. So um, he says, in preparation for ground school syllabus, so in preparation for uh, flight school, do you think it's a good idea to begin uh, studies on the ground syllabus? I believe in doing so, it would, be, it would give me a good opportunity to begin a strong, get a strong footing. Um, when I do attend grounds or the classes, um, what are your thoughts on that? So um, my thoughts are, I think it's great to do a bit of uh, pre-studying. Uh, I wouldn't do, I wouldn't do tons of it. I wouldn't go through a full ground school session or anything like that. Um, but I, I think it's definitely a, a good idea. A, a book I would recommend to pretty much everybody to, to have a read through and, and get started with is the Helicopter Flying Handbook. Uh, you can get that on Amazon or pretty much anywhere. It's a very cheap book. I think it's about 16 bucks or something. Um, the Helicopter Flying Handbook, because that one is good for uh, everything to do with the helicopter, all the aerodynamics and how a helicopter works and what the different controls are and how they work and so forth. It's got lots of great pictures and diagrams and stuff like that. Um, so yes, I would suggest maybe grabbing that book if you wanted to, um, giving it a read through and just having a basic understanding. Um, but as far as going too into depth into the studying, I wouldn't really worry about that because what happens is you read something and uh, if you don't have a practical application for it, if, you, if you're not actually in the helicopter every day flying, uh, most of it's not going to make sense. It's just going to go over your head. You're not really going to have an understanding of what the book is talking about. Um, without that practical application. So I wouldn't waste too much of your time um, trying to pre-study everything ahead of time. But yes, def definitely having a, a basic understanding of the, you know, what the three different controls are, how they work, how the helicopter in general works, a little bit of the aerodynamics. Um, you don't need to understand all of it by any means, but having a little bit of a background is nice. Uh, we have students all the time coming to our school with zero background whatsoever. They haven't done any reading really, or very little anyways. Um, and that's fine as well. Um, we can teach people from wherever they're at. Um, but yeah, having a little bit of background is definitely a benefit. So um, flight course and aircraft. Uh, so it says, I'm interested in the commercial with the night rating course in the G2 with a 10 hour endorsement option on the R44 or the Bell 206, depending on the affordability. Also a point of inquiry. Um, I had a read, um, I had read the uh, news article on the Vertical Magazine website where Sancho mentioned that the plan was to add up to three Cavalry G2s to the fleet for training. However, I noticed that uh, you have listed your current G2, uh, Gulf Echo Lima Papa, um, as for sale on your website. Are you planning to move back to the 300 CBI for flight training? Fantastic question. Uh, definitely no, we are not moving back to the Schweitzer. Uh, we're super excited and happy about uh, flying the Cavalry. Uh, what's actually happened is uh, just recently we've been um, designated as Canada's first BC's um, distributor for the Cavalry G2. And so uh, what our process is going to be now, the reason that helicopter is listed on our website, uh, it's going to be listed online as well on controller soon. Um, so what we're going to be doing as a school, our business model is basically going to be, uh, we're going to be buying new helicopters from the factory on a regular basis. Um, we're hoping to buy up to three or four potentially in a year. And, um, and then we're going to be selling the ones that we have currently in stock. If somebody wanted to buy a brand new one, they could do that as well. Uh, but our goal is to um, keep our helicopters for between six, uh, six months to a year and then sell them and, and always have brand new aircrafts in our school. So no, we're definitely not going back to the Schweitzer. Uh, we loved it, but uh, we're going into something a bit more modern um, and a bit more maintenance friendly. And um, so that's why the helicopter is listed on our website. Um, as far as the course goes, um, yes, getting the, the commercial course, um, our commercial all-in-one course um, offers the 10-hour R44 endorsement as just something that's standard in the course. So you do 90 hours in the cavalry, the last 10 hours in the R44, and that's fantastic. 
I personally wouldn't spend the money on the Jet Ranger endorsement. Um, I would just stick to getting the R44 endorsement because that's most likely the helicopter you're going to fly first in the industry. Um, so personally, if it was me doing it, uh, I wouldn't spend the extra money on the Jet Ranger endorsement. I'd just stick with the R44. And uh, as far as the night rating goes, that's up to you. There aren't really a lot of companies in Canada that uh, require the night rating. Most of them are VFR operators, so they fly during the day um, in, in weather that uh, is um, not in clouds. That's what the VFR is, uh, visual flight rules. Um, so yeah, if you wanted to work for a company that, uh, that fly, flies IFR, so on instruments, um, there's only about four or five of them in Canada really right now, uh, major operators. Um, so if you wanted to work for one of them, then yes, you would need the night rating. So that would be a great thing to get right off the bat. If not, no big deal. Um, I would personally say, again, save your money with that. Um, get it at a later date when you uh, think you want to work for one of those companies, unless you have a plan in mind already that you want to work for one of them. So uh, the main companies that do uh, uh, fly IFR and at night uh, would be the medevac company. So uh, Helijet, Stars, Orange, um, or the police. And there's only a couple of police operators in Canada as well. So um, those would kind of be the main ones. Or if you're going to go offshore and work for somebody like CHC, um, do offshore IFR work, but um, that's usually another couple steps down the career road. So anyways, I hope that answers that one. Um, flight training instructors, in addition to training on advanced emergency uh, flight procedures, does the course include progressive training on aerial photography flight maneuvers, slinging and long lining operations, Bambi bucket precision flying, uh, heli skiing operations, etc. Would you be the only CFI um, teaching all the students? Uh, no, I'm not the only CFI. I'm not the only flight instructor. Um, my brother Sancho is also um, a flight instructor as well. Uh, so it would be one of the two of us. Uh, at the moment, uh, there's the two of us that are training. Um, so you'd either get Sancho or I. And um, and then as far as the advanced training, uh, we do all kinds of things in the course. Um, you, you touch on, on many different things. We do lots of mountain uh, training exercises, so that would get you into the, um, the heli skiing type uh, operations. Um, we, uh, we do a little bit of long line practice, uh, not specifically with a Bambi bucket, but um, with just a, a load underneath the helicopter, which is the same basic practice. Um, so we do a little bit of that. And uh, so that would be the sling long lining. Um, aerial photography, there's nothing really terribly specific um, to do with aerial photography, but we do give you lots of advanced type training uh, throughout the course um, that would help with things like that as well. So um, I hope that answers that question. International students, um, it says, I understand that many of your students are coming from out of Canada. Do you provide assistance in uh, settling services uh, prior to landing in Canada? Would it be possible to discuss uh, some of these arrangements with your past students uh, so as to better prepare during that time. So yes, uh, we do get lots of students from all over the world, uh, which is pretty neat right now. Um, we have people from all different places. We have uh, uh, Mexico City, from Switzerland, and from, New Z uh, from Australia, sorry, um, and then one Canadian as well. So yeah, very diverse class, which is pretty neat. Um, we do help them uh, find places to live here in Canada. Um, a lot of it is fairly simple. Um, if you go on craigslist.com, um, you can find many, many places to, to live here in the Abbotsford area. And I'm always more than happy to, uh, to check out one of the places. So if you send me a link for it and say, hey, I think this is a great place. Do you mind checking it out? Um, I can get in touch with the, the landlord and I can go have a look at it for you. Take a couple uh, pictures or a video or something like that for you as well and uh, show you that spot. Uh, we do have a couple people that we work with specifically um, that have places available, so we can definitely help you um, get settled in one of those places as well if they have availability. Um, so yes, definitely options for that. I would love to chat with you more about that. I'll probably be emailing you back. Um, if you wanted to talk to other students, um, yes, I can definitely get you um, some email addresses if, uh, if they're okay with that, and, uh, and you can chat with them a bit about that as well. So. Um, career aspirations and job market. This is the last question. And it says, um, I have started to keep a close eye on the job market for heli pilots in the low 100 hour, especially for uh, pilots approaching 40 years of age. Uh, whilst I understand the risks involved with such an expensive change of career, I would like a realistic opinion from your point of view on getting job opportunities and building hours and ratings towards requirements 
for applying for the ATPL license. So the ATPL is the Airline Transport Pilot License. Um, again, that's kind of a step, a couple of steps down the road. Once you've built up some experience, you would work on getting the ATPL. Um, as far as getting work in the industry, I tell everybody the same thing. Um, you need to be the type of person that if you want to get into this, you need to be willing to go anywhere in Canada and do any kind of work. You can't be picky about what type of uh, helicopter job you're going to have right off the bat and where it's going to be. Um, you most likely will not be flying right off the bat. Um, there's a very high likelihood that you'll be a ground crew to begin with, a ramp crew. Uh, a ramp crew or ground crew, uh, fueling helicopters, um, loading and unloading passengers or cargo or whatever from the helicopters, um, potentially fueling the helicopter in remote locations. They might give you a truck and send you off into the bush and, and get you fueling helicopters all day out in a remote location. It could be with a spray company and so you'd be uh, filling um, different spray materials and stuff like that in the in the pods all day long and while the helicopters are doing the spray work. So many, many different things you could be doing. Um, so yeah, depending on the type of work, um, if you're willing to do basically anything um, and, and go anywhere, the work is out there. Uh, we have a phenomenal hiring statistic um, in the last couple of years especially. Um, I can't think of anybody in the last couple of years that hasn't gotten a job who has, uh, has gone into it with the intention of working. And, and that's in the last couple of years. Um, it's, it's pretty phenomenal to see um, the willingness of our students to say, you know what, um, I don't care about my age and what I've done in the past or anything like that. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna leave uh, whatever I have to behind to, to go out there and find this work. And it's been awesome to see the results. Um, if you're not willing to, to do that, if, you don't, if you're not able to relocate, um, if you're not able to, to um, allow yourself to do whatever the work is, um, then yeah, it's definitely going to be tough. Uh, people don't post positions for the 100-hour pilots. They post positions for the 1,000 or 2,000-hour pilot. Um, they will hire the 100-hour pilot, but it's not going to be to fly right away. It's, they, they want that time. It's usually about a couple of years. They want that time, and, and it could be less, but... Um, they want that time to be able to check you out, see what your character is like. Uh, are you a safe person? Um, what are you going to be like flying my helicopter? That's, that's kind of what they're looking at. So if they can determine that you're the right person for the job, um, you work well, you're, you're safe and conscientious around the aircrafts and so forth, um, then they're going to give you a shot. So um, you have to kind of give your, you put, put your time in to prove yourself. So um, you won't be seeing very many postings. There is the odd, odd posting for a 100-hour ground crew position or something. You won't see very many of those posted. Um, BC Helicopters has a great reputation in the industry. We've been around since 1994, and, and companies know the type of flying and training that we do, um, and, and they really like it. They like the aircrafts that we fly, and uh, so we have a great history working with many different operators, um, getting our students hired with them. So, um, yeah, I hope that answers your questions. I think that's pretty much all of them. Um, I would love to get in touch with you. I'm going to email you back here. Uh, but I hope that gives you a sort of more comprehensive um, answer than just giving you an email back. Um, it's hard to type all this uh, into an email and, and give you uh, an answer that's, that's kind of uh, complete. Um, so I hope that helps you out. I hope that helps everybody else out. And um, if you do have any more questions, uh, please leave them either in the comments below or email me back and, and I'd love to chat more with you. So hope this was helpful. Um, if you did find it helpful, uh, please click on the subscribe button right over there. No, it's going to be over there. And um, if you think somebody else would find this useful, uh, please share it with a friend. And I look forward to seeing you guys again soon.